Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about classes, this time talking about a special rule or a general practice known as the rule of three, and also a lesser known rule of two or the law of two. Now, these are some rules that you might have heard in talks or people talk about in passing. So I want to go ahead and just show you what they are, why they exist, and why it is a general good practice. So in order to get us started, though, I want to go ahead and review some code from the previous lesson. So if you watched the last video, you'll be up to speed here. I've just separated things out to different files. And if you're just joining me now, go ahead and watch that last lesson or just pay attention here where I describe what we did. So in the top right corner here, I have an array class here. It's got a constructor, destructor, a copy constructor, and the copy assignment operator here, as well as some member functions. And just to make this a little bit more clear, I want to go ahead and just label these special member functions here. And that means the uh, constructor, which is one, the destructor, which is two, and the copy constructor. And I'll also put sort of in parentheses as the second number three, because it's another place where we're making copies three or four, depending on how you want to count this copy assignment uh, operator, which will also be important. And then these are the rest of our regular member functions here, where I can print some data or set some data. That data would be this pointer here to some data where we would allocate a block of memory. So this is an array. So if it's easy for you to uh, just think of here, and let me go ahead and fit this in one screen. Basically, this array is just an array that can hold some amount of integers. We can print out that data or set data. And in the last lesson, we talked about the importance of defining a constructor or destructor when we are allocating data, and importantly, this copy constructor here. Okay, so just as a quick review, here was our constructor on the left here, where we initialize 10 integers here and allocate memory for our data, assign them to just some random values. Our destructor deletes the actual array, being careful to use the brackets to make sure that we delete the full chunk of memory, that is all 10 elements in the array. Then we had our copy constructor, which is called when we construct a new array, that is this array data type here, this custom user defined type. And we saw that we had to allocate new memory for our array and then uh, assign it here. And then the copy assignment operator, which was a little bit of the weird one in the last video, is where you're doing an assignment anywhere in your code outside of when you're initially constructing it. Again, uh, here's just to make clear where copy constructor is called. That's when we're making a new array. My new array equals some existing array. So this is where the copy constructor would be called for this new array. And copy assignment would be after an array has been constructed and you're using the equals operator. So what we did again is check to make sure that, well, we're not assigning our array to itself. Uh, otherwise, if we are doing that, there's no work to be done. Um, otherwise, we delete any data. If it does exist, we might want to check if it's null or perhaps what state the array is in and so on. And then we essentially just allocate some new memory and copy everything from the right hand side. OK, so that would copy everything from my array here on the right hand side into my array, too. And then we have the rest of our helper functions here. OK, so let's just go ahead and give this a run for uh, completeness sake here. And just to see what the uh, code is doing. Again, we had a main here. We initialized one array here, set some of the elements of its data here, then called the copy assignment operator and then printed the data. And we should see the same list twice here. So how we would run this program by compiling each of the C++ files here, our implementation of array in our main. And then if I run this, well, we should see that we have our first array here. It's constructed. Then we have the, uh, or rather, this is the first array that's constructed, the second one, and then it is copy assigned here when we hit line 14. All right, so if you need a review on that, you can go ahead and check out the previous video to see uh, this built up from scratch. But now it's separated out into three different files with the interface here on the right side, the implementation on the left side, and then our main uh, where we are using this data structure. 
Now, what do we care about in this video? What's sort of the point here? What do we want to talk about this idea of a rule of three? Well, if you've never seen the rule of three, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. And a simple Google, if you Google rule of three, C++, it's going to talk about a rule of thumb, which is an expression, or a general best practice when writing C++ code. So the idea is if you define any sort of class, and if you have to write a custom constructor, a custom destructor, or a custom copy constructor, chances are if you have to implement one of these, just one of them, you should implement all three of these, okay? Meaning a uh, constructor, destructor, copy constructor, and I also throw in the copy assignment operator, which is basically doing some sort of copy here. Now, why is that? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, rule of three here and just see a little bit about why this uh, matters. And I'm going to go ahead and just simplify this for you. And there's this concept known as, uh, which we talked about previously, a shallow copy if you have a very trivial data type. Meaning that if your actual data type, uh, so I'll go ahead and highlight this, in your code here is just a integer or a primitive type. So let's go ahead and um, do that here. So if I only had, for example, a trivial data type like float uh, one float here or int one int, these are all trivially copyable. The compiler is just going to be able to do an assignment because, well, it's allocating enough memory for a float per object that is created here. So we don't have to really do anything complicated. But as we saw last time, whenever we have a pointer, well, things get a little bit difficult because, well, when we do an assignment with a pointer, we're having two things pointing to the same piece of memory. OK, and I illustrated that in the last video. So this rule or this law of three is basically just stating that, look, if I had to write code such as I have in my constructor here where I'm allocating memory, I probably need to also pro write the destructor because the C++ compiler is not going to be smart enough to figure out, hey, how should I destroy data? Is it a pointer to one thing or was it a pointer to a block? Now, maybe some compilers would be smart enough to deduce this, but as you could imagine, things could get a little bit tricky. So since I wrote my constructor here where I allocated memory, I need to also make sure that I'm responsible for writing the destructor. OK, and again, since I've done one of these, I also need to make sure that I implement the copy constructor. OK, so now that we've talked about the law of three, let's go ahead and talk about the law of the big two. So I'll go ahead and bring you to the law of big two here. And the idea is that you can leave the destructor undefined if you've got some sort of perhaps smart pointer or perhaps a collection that is maintaining how objects are destroyed within your class. So what does that mean? Well, let's say for our array, for example, if I was able to make this data a shared pointer or perhaps some sort of smart pointer in the memory class. Or perhaps let's go ahead and just say that I have uh, some data type like a vector. Maybe I want to actually do some construction here. So let's go ahead and just refactor this slightly here to use std vector. And we have data here. So maybe I still want to do something custom with the actual uh, initialization in the constructor here. So let's just go ahead and uh, get rid of this here. And I just want to do something like data pushback i. And let's go ahead and do something like that. And the actual copy constructor, again, I don't need to sort of reallocate for this data structure because it's going to handle that internally within the vector. So I can get rid of this here. And what I want to do is do data push back the right hand sign data. So we'll go ahead and do that. Our copy assignment uh, operator. Well, I still want to check to see if these objects are the same here. I don't need to delete anything since I have a pointer, but I do need to again do this data and do the pushback of the right hand side. Uh, now, actually, with the 
copy assignment operator, I might have to do stuff like data, uh, erase the actual vector, or whatever. Um, so there's different types of tricks that you can do for completeness. I'm just going to clear it out here so I can see this uh, example here running. And let me go ahead and try to uh, build this here. Um, and in this case, my destructor here, you'll see that I did get an error here about deleting it because, again, we don't need to delete uh, our vector here because, well, there's just nothing to do. The actual destruction is taking place within this vector data structure. So I actually don't really need this destructor here. Uh, I can just define the empty one and it'll run uh, just as we have previously seen here doing basically the same thing. But in this case, I'm following what we would say is the law of big two because I've made a change to the constructor in how I was constructing or assigning the object. So I probably should also make a change to the copy constructor and the copy assignment operator. But the destructor itself here, um, which I'll uh, make sure to spell right here for you folks, uh, destructor. Um, we actually don't need to define there's it's just trivial so if if you have some collection here whether it's some sort of smart pointer that's going to deallocate itself some sort of other data structure then you don't need to do this so we say it's just the law of big two where you have the constructor and the copy constructor that you have to define and again i sort of lump in the copy assignment operator with the copy constructor when i talk about law of big two all right folks so that's this lesson here where we talked about the law of the big three, meaning that, again, if you define one of the constructor, destructor, or copy constructor, you need to define all three. There's the law of big two where you can get away with not having a destructor if you know that the collection is going to take care of deallocating all of the resources when the object is destroyed. So it's enough to just use a trivial destructor. In general, if you're not sure, I would say define all three, follow the rule of three. And for some of you who might be wondering, in fact, there are some other operations that we might need to define. Some things like move assignment, for example, with, when we learned about move semantics and the move assignment operator. So we will talk about the rule of five later on in this series. Thanks for your attention. I hope that sort of makes clear what some of this jargon is that you hear when you hear people talk about the rule of three. And now you know it's as simple as that. Take care, folks.